thanks to Day by Day. Slavery is a dark stain on Ghana's history. All along the country's coast, European colonizers built forts and castles as trading posts where they could buy slaves from local tribes and ship them off to the Caribbean islands, from where they would never return. Many of these stone edifices are still standing today, but like all historical buildings, the attraction is not the aging structure and the crumbling walls, it's the haunting stories they tell. On today's episode, we bring you perhaps the most haunting of all slave stories. Come with me to Keta in the Volta region, to the last Ghanaian fort on the way to Togo. Welcome to Fort Prinzenstein. <laughs> Under the care of the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board, Fort Prinzenstein, or what is left of it, receives daily visitors from around the world. But there is something unique about the role this particular fort played in Ghana's sordid slavery story. Evo Akoli knows all about it. <laughs> So walk us through what happens once they come in through this gate. What was the process that they are taking through? So this, over here, this is why the female slave bath. In this? Yeah, so when they are taking their bath, the governor stands at the top, point at the one he had mind, split with them. That's why we have a lot of mulattoes in Kita. Mm. You can see family like Chris, Citrus, Mam, Anderson, Peterson, Nelson, uh, Jacobson, those be, uh, bearing the name of the former governess of the fort. Mm. So the water that they bath remains here in case they are thirsty. They do the same water that they were bathing with. They were drinking their bath water. <laughs> This one of the, the female dungeons where the female slaves were kept before being transported. So over here, this uh, the artist's impression about how the slaves were kept in this room. The artist's impression about how the fort was before the sea destroyed part of the fort. So this is the original yeah. fort. Yeah. So where are we right now? So this portion of the fort had been taken by the sea. And this is the remaining side where we are now. So tell, tell me something. You say half of this has been lost. It, 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 yeah. it doesn't exist anymore. When no. we come in, yeah. what we see is this half. It's half, half, yes. So it means right now we are standing Right over here. Here? Yeah. I see. Yeah, so this side has been taken. And this is the watchtower. The original watchtower where the slaves, the, the slave masters stand and overlook the entire building of the fort. And it's not there anymore? No, the, the, the sea have taken it. So the sea is here? The sea is here, yeah. So the sea is passed here. So this is the gate of no return. But it's not there anymore. Yeah. Now, Christian gate of return. You know, slave trade was a trade by butter. They were using brandy, whiskey, mirror in exchange for slaves. And later on, they start using cowrie shells. So, 500 of this cowrie by female slaves, and 300 of these by a male slave. The male reason the female produce over there. Mm. They sell to other plantations. That's why the female were more expensive than a male slave. So what you and our money derived the name from this. It's what we call CD. CD comes from that. Yes. Wonderful. You know, after the cowrie shells, they use a money called Phoenix. 
Phoenix was the money they used after the, the cow riches. That's where our great grandfathers used to say, Phoenix What does that mean? You see, I don't have Phoenix to be given to you. Uh, say it again. Phoenix. Phoenix was the money they used after the cow riches. You know, butter trade, they were using brandy whiskey mirror and later on they start using cow riches. Mm -hmm. This very cow riches, you have to dive under the seabed before you get it. That's why it's valuable. Yeah, yes. I see. Mm -hmm. And 300 of them will give you a male slave, yeah. 500 will give you a female slave. Yeah, yes. So this is the smoking pipe, they used to smoke the tobacco. They used this to smoke the tobacco. So it's made of, of ivory. Oh. It's what they used to exchange for slaves in those days. So they will bring this to the locals yes, yeah. and then take the yes, slaves. Yes. And this tool was taken from the chiefs. You know, when they came here, they sought permission from the chiefs. And when they are putting up the fort, they realized that they are converting the fort into a slave post. So our people stood against them. Talk with the Ghani. Say no, they will not allow them to continue the building. Mm. So Toby the Gany was killed. That make our people move from here to where they are now, Agbosuma. And that's why they celebrate the Katasoma to Tuzan over there. So the people of Agbosuma yeah. were originally here. Exactly. And the Danes mm. killed the chief yeah. and sacked the people exactly. and kept the stool. Yeah, they took the stool from the palace and then it has been kept over here. So that the people of Agbosma spotted the Danish, uh, the Danish governor along the coast of Hedano Denu. So he was captured. And so they make him the idol over there in the back of the Denu market. So when you go to the back of the Denu market, you see some big idol. It contained the remains of the Danish governor at that time. So when he was captured, he never make, made it back here. You know, they, no. they killed him there. They killed him. Because he was the one who killed, killed their chief. So the pictures we are seeing over here is the artist's impression about how the slaves were captured, mm. brought here, and then transported. You can see the first picture shows how they were brought from the interior in chains, how they were kept, and then transported. All these pictures shows, and this uh, chairs shows how the governor, the governor of the fort relies on the top of the, the fort. This is what he used to relax. So these are original chairs yes. from the 1700s? Yes, that used by the governor. The governor will be relaxing in yeah, yeah. while he's up on his bed. Yeah. Mm. I've noticed many of the artifacts are still in pretty good shape. It's not because they are well preserved, it's because they are not that old. Slave trade continued in this fort long after it stopped in the rest of the country. We are brought here, kept over here, transport. So I mean, you can imagine, eh? they are walking through some forest. That yeah, forest yeah. today maybe is a town. Mm, yeah. The roads and everything. Exactly. But they have to walk all the way into the fort right here. Wow. Mm. And some of them were beaten up when they tried to dis uh, disobey the governor of the fort. And this is a slave revolt? Yeah. I see the yeah. Wow. All this. Yes. This is the branding of the fort. The slaves. Yeah, yeah. They brand them for easy identification. Yes. You see how they have dressed him up nicely mm. like that? Mm. Eh? You would think it's for his own good, but it's just to make the product yeah. look nice. No, they, they will test the eyes, whether the eyes is clear. Yeah. And then they will open their mouth of the state to know, yeah. to see how, whether they have the 32 teeth. When it's up to that, you know, the fully grown adult. I'm even talking uh -huh. about how they have dressed him uh -huh. yeah. oh, white, yeah. white. Yeah. You think it's for his own good, but yes. it's actually to make him look like uh, a better product. Exactly. So he can fetch a That's what over there in the slave market, they use the shea butter, yeah. 
mm. to smear around their body just to make them very attractive to the buyers. Like mm. a shiny product. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this one. See, we don't spy the, the children. Mm -hmm. And this is how the, the arrangement is in the, in the ship. In the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how they arrange them in the lower yeah. deck. In the lower deck of the ship, this is how they arrange them. Before they were transported. Yeah. So this one, in the plantation, they use, um, they lock their mouth. So that they will not eat the sugar cane they were cultivating. Wow. Mm. Efo, what, what is this? This is a spine of a, a blue whale. Really? It, it was captured by the, the dance. You know, he tries to capsize the ship mm -hmm. and he manages to kill it. So the bone remains here. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, you know, a whale is the biggest mammal in the sea. So it's, it's just a real one bone. section yeah, of yeah, the spine. Bone. Yeah, it's a fraction of uh, the entire whale we are wow. seeing today. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we kept over here huh. to today. <laughs> so this is uh, a real bone of a blue whale. Ghana's so, very mm -hmm. own Moby Dick, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So when you watch here over here too, this is how the fort looks like before the sea destroyed part of the fort. So that's the front? Yeah, the front, oh. where the sea have destroyed. How long ago did the sea destroy the 1980 to 2000. 2000 was the time they, they started the construction of the fort. 2004, they completed the fort, uh, the, the sea defense wall of the fort. So between the 1980 and 2000, we lost about half. Yeah. So from the fort to the sea, it's about four to five miles away. You know where originally? I was, yes. Where I was born, uh -huh. it's in the middle of the sea. 1984, the sea destroyed our house. We moved to where we are now. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why the sea defense war was such a big issue. Yeah. Because you were losing communities. Yes, sir. And so where you were born, it's now in the middle of the sea. Yes, sir. So the sea have this right because of the fort. And then the town, the actual town is in the sea. You know, Qatar was the regional capital for water region. Yeah. Due to the erosion, they moved the capital to Ho. You yes. see? Mm -hmm. So our house got destroyed in 1984. So this is how the fort was before the sea destroyed. Mm -hmm. They transported the slaves from the north mm -hmm. into the fort. They burn marks at the very part of their body for easy identification. Yeah. They what's this? They were brought down what's and this? arranged this way. This is how they arranged them in the lower deck of the ship. Mm. This is the lower deck of the ship. They beat them. They use horse and dog to chase and then keep them asleep. The weak and sick ones, weak and sick ones, they were tossed overboard. This one, this one you call Kunyo Wu. They will put around their neck to prevent them from escaping. It's heavy metal. Hmm. You can escape with this. They put on the marks so that people cannot easily identify them. Right. Mm -hmm. But in America, plantation slave owners put on this for the slaves. As I was telling you earlier, they lock their mouth so that they will not eat the sugar cane they were cultivating. And then inside the dungeons over here, too, they miss them so that they will not understand each other. So people from different parts of yes, the country yes. were mixed, so they can't speak their yes, own and, language and to plot each other. and then escape. Wow, I see. Then that means they were getting help from locals because mm. the Danes or the British, they won't know the difference between the languages. Mm. So it means they had locals. They were using lang uh, sign language. I was telling you, they were using the, the this in the mulattos. Yes. Their, mm -hmm. their, as their own blood uh, as a translator. So I get the point I'm they making is if they their, want to mix people, mm. so they have some people they have brought from Gambaga, some people from. Mm. Uh, they don't know 
mm -hmm. the language is different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if they have somebody helping them, like mm -hmm. maybe the mulattoes who are helping with the translation, that 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 person will tell them that these two languages are different, so you can mix these two and they can't communicate. That's, That's what right? the mulattoes were doing over here. They were helping them in the in the business. I see. Mm -hmm. So this is what they used to weigh the slaves to see how strong they are before they buy. And after buying to the one that slaves to maintain that request from fetch the same value on the other side. Uh -huh. So when they realize that it's losing that required from the tie block at their back, throw them to the sea because they will need a strong slaves who can work in a sugar cane or cotton plantation for them. Wow. So this is what they used to weigh them to see how strong they are before they buy. And this thing is over 300 years old? Yes. The way the, the captives, the way the captives before being transported. This was what they used to weigh them. This looks like any other kitchen in a compound house in any part of Ghana. It's easy to imagine women bustling about the place, boiling, frying and grinding in large quantities. The good stuff for the whites and the rest for the slaves. So, this is what we call ette. Traditionally, when our mothers marry, they have to take this to, to their marita home. When they divorce, they have to move it. So moving from one man to another, we call it hotel dito. Oh. So this we call a ten mm -hmm. And this the ete. So hotel dito. Yeah. Ete home a rim. A home. You uproot it and plant it mm -hmm. in your house, one house. So a home, va rim. You move so, it from that uh, 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 man house. To another man house. That's the hotel. The dito, dito. Yeah. Hotel dito. yeah. Yeah. So okay. when they buy the slaves, there's another distance. When they buy the slaves, the slaves were taken across the Atlantic. And those slaves never come back. And our people start calling those from out, outside, they are, they are from Abluchi, meaning Oblo, Ovachi, meaning they have deceived them by taking them there without coming back. Oblo, because over Wachi. Wachi. And that's where the Abuchi came, came from. Yeah. You see, that, that actually makes more sense than the explanation that we, the accounts have for the word Abuchi. Where you hear people say Abronechi or whatever. This makes more sense. Oblo, over Wachi. Wachi. Mm. So you deceived us mm. and they will never return. Exactly. Wow. And the Danish over here were taking brandy, whiskey, mirror. They have not, uh, they were taking brandy, whiskey, brandy. They have not tested our local one before. Mm -hmm. They test our local one. They like the test and they pronounce the word. So that be, and our people thought that was the name of the drink. So it become so that be, so that be. Oh. So when you go to any drinking spot over here, you say, I need so that be, they will sell you. That's the appetite. I see. So that's the cooking pan they used to mm. cook for the slaves. And then the, the oven is still here. Mm. The storeroom where they kept the slaves. There is a storeroom of the the fort. Where they kept what? The 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 the, the food that they cook for the slaves. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is this an old tortoise skeleton? Yeah, you know, a real one. A real one. This one. Can I touch it? Yeah, it was captured, and they ate the fresh. <laughs> so the the shell remain here up to today. How old is it? Do you know? I uh, actually <laughs> can't tell. <laughs> 
is old as the fort. Wow. Mm. Over here, this is where the, some of the slaves were chained. You see the very gutter, this one, which have been filled with sand. Yeah. They will pour the water into this, and the slaves will be in licking from the gutter. Because they fear that when they open to give them food or water, they attack them. And when the slaves were about to be taken away, they starved the slaves for two days. So they become weak. And they lead them through the tunnel to the gate of no return. From there they were taken away. So some of them were chained over here. So we are going into the dungeon, the main dungeon, where our great grandmothers, great grandfathers were kept before being transported. So this one over here, they secure the slave by two. They will chain one right leg to another left leg. Like both of our legs will be chained to this. Exactly. So they use their fingers to scratch both the wall and the floor. They wanted to dig into the building and escape from them. Human fingers. Yeah, fingers. Concrete. Yes. And those are the chains you can see over there. They used to chain their neck, their leg in those days. And also they realized that some of our forefathers, you know people from Togo, Bay, they have powers. They lean on the wall. They will just incarcerate some ways and vanish. So they put mercury in between the walls. And that stops them from doing that. Exactly. That was the antidote at that time. So, those who attempted got stuck. That's why the sea was destroying the fort. You can see human remains in the wall of the fort. Inside the walls. Mm, inside the walls of the fort. And this is what they used to carry the dead ones. It's like a stretcher. Yeah. The heart were used by the slave masters. And this, the keys, they used to open some of these uh, locks, spy locks. This is one of the rooms. And up to today, when you, know, you are in the fort, you can hear a screaming, loud screaming. When you come here, you don't see anything. You can hear a screaming. Yes, that's why we stay outside the fort. When people come, before we took them into the fort. Has that ever happened while you are in the middle of a tour? You are on that side and then you hear the Yes. Scene. It happens. And you come here and there's no... You know, then you will not see anything. So you have to call on the traditional authorities to come and do what they have been doing before we came here. So this is one of the dungeons where they and so you can see that shinap over there were used to to pour a patient over here. You see there. So the pictures that we are seeing over here, this how the fort was before 1847. This was how the fort was in 1847. So and these are how the slaves were Let's talk about this one. Yeah, this, this the so, fort. So this is the, the gate of no return. Right. So yeah. I remember yeah. from the morning yeah, yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. There this is the two walls. Yeah. And then there's the, um, the yeah. observatory on yeah, top. Yeah, yes. But in front of that, there were still uh, houses. Yeah. There were towns. Yes, towns. Which have now all been washed away by the sea, yeah. And these are the cannons in front of the fort to, to defend the fort against attack. You can see the British, uh, the Danish flag over here. 
this how the slaves were brought in into the fort right here. So this is just telling us the story of how how, many how they were captured in Africa and then sent to America from 1650 to 1660. I was telling you that the abolition left in 1834. Yeah. But illegal trafficking goes on up to that 1834. The abolition the left in 1807. It continued to 1834. That's why we celebrate emancipation day in here. Yeah. This is how they arranged the slaves in the lower deck of the ship. That was how they arranged them. This place gives me the chills. I don't know why, but there's a weight on my shoulders as I stand on the concrete floor that has been smoothly resurfaced with the blood, sweat and feces of thousands of terrified men. I can tell that things have happened here. I can feel it. You know, something just occurred to me. The transatlantic slave trade actually ended in 1808. Now, I've been to many slave forts and castles across the coast of Ghana. But I've just realized that this one here in Keta, Prinzenstein, continued to trade slaves long after the transatlantic slave trade was abolished. So they continued sending slaves from here all the way up to 1860, another 52 years of sending our ancestors abroad illegally. But you just imagine it. Imagine for a minute you are at home one day in the middle of the, in the middle of the country somewhere in your farm. Somebody sneaks up behind you, grabs you, throws a sack over your head, ties you up to other people, and marches you hundreds of kilometers over several days to this strange place and throws you into this room with another 200 odd men who you've never met before. They chain you, they shackle you to a stranger and you are standing in some 10 square inches of space, struggling for air, boiling under the heat, rubbing against the skins of other sweating men. The, the one thing that you need to sustain your life is water. And the only way to get water is when your slave masters pour it onto the ground. Then you fight your fellow 200 men to lick this off the ground just so you can survive long enough and stay strong enough for them to illegally sell you to some white men who will make you work in their sugarcane fields for the rest of your life. You see, the reason why this thing is striking me so hard is because, look, even when you are broke to the point where you don't even have one CD, one cowrie shell, you still own your life. You can never be so broke that you don't own your life. But somehow slave trade created a situation where even your life doesn't belong to you. And long after humanity decided that that act was too cruel to continue, here in Prinzenstein, it did not stop. I still have mixed feelings about today's adventure. It's left me with a strange feeling, one I know I'll never forget. Until fairly recently, this walk I'm taking now would still have been within the walls of the fort. Half of that fort is now lost to the sea, just like half of the slaves that set sail from here. But the whole of its history remains forever, never to be forgotten, just as my memories of today will remain with me forever.
This episode of Joy Prime Explore was brought to you thanks to Day by Day 